We can now go to the Lands Commission where President Kofuado is ready to commission some 312 uh, building uh, apartments for the police service. Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives, the gallant men and women of the Ghana Police Service, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this great day in history where we commission into the service of the Ghana Police Service newly constructed 312 housing units for their use. It is by the President of the Republic and it's powered by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources in partnership with the Ministry of Interior. Today, we behold an innovative plan by government to allow private sector to collaborate with government to ease the infrastructure problems of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a day to be joyful and proud as Ghanaians because we've done it yet again. Please put your hands together and let's celebrate the President of our Republic for creating this. Today's program is rather brief, but it will leave you very informed as to all that has gone into this great work of art that we behold and what it means for the Ghana Police Service. Welcoming us formally, it is my pleasure to invite the Great Accra Regional Minister. Would you please make welcome the Honorable Henry Corte, MP. His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, the Minister for National Security, Honorable Albert Kandapa, Minister of the Interior, Honorable Abruz Derry, Minister of Defense, Honorable Dominic Nitiwu, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Abu Jinakwo, the Member of Parliament for Domiko Abenya, Honorable Sarah Ajwa Safo, the CEO of the Ghana Free Zones, Board, Free Zones Authority, former Ambassador of India. Honorable Okwe, the MCE for this area, Honorable Assembly Members President, President, sorry, Abbasai, the Inspector General of Police, Honorable uh, Dr. George Akufo Dampari. Members of POMAP, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mime, Name, all protocol duly observed. Mr. President, I had a long speech to make, but today is your day. Today is the day that the world will know that indeed you walk your talk. So I will not read the speech. But let me say that as your humble servant, responsible for Greater Accra as a minister, chairman of the Regional Security Council, RECSEC, Mr. President, on behalf of the good people of Greater Accra, we want to thank you expressly, Mr. President, that Greater Accra, by the grace of God, is also enjoying its share of the cake. Name it when it comes to rose, where again, as you can see here, it's unprecedented. When it comes to jobs, greater Accra, one Today, as you can see what is happening here, Mr. President, like I said, I will not read the speech. But let me also assure you that by the grace of God, in collaboration with your security ministers, defense, interior, and national security, the security intelligence agencies, the IGP Greater Accra is relatively very calm. Security situation is good, Mr. President, I can assure you. Mr. President, we thank you very much for this and many more 
that are yet to be commissioned. Yesterday, I was with you, Mr. President, at Ajen Kotoku area, and you cut sword for the beginning of construction of a company that's in Ghana here will be manufacturing vaccines for R1 malaria treatments. Mr. President, we are told that after the completion of this huge factory, it is going to supply the whole of Africa, not just Ghana. Indeed, you have walked your talk. Mr. President, Greater Accra says, Aiku, Chunopakwa, Emu Aiku, and we welcome you to Domiko Abinya once again to commission this. My only caution through the IGP is that this edifice must be put to good use. The IGP is doing so well. You look at the police headquarters, it's unprecedented. I plead with the IGP to bring that same discipline here. No loto kiosks. No kiosks. Let it look like the way it is. That is what I ask the IGP to ensure that those who are going to occupy this place must make sure that it is the way it is. And also, Mr. President, it will please you to know that most of government lands that have been encroached, myself as a regional security chairman and your lands minister and other agencies are moving in to re retrieve government lands so it can be used for purposes of this nature. The President, I want to assure you that very soon we'll be beginning, we'll start the processes of dealing with issues around Ramsar. And those lands that we are able to retrieve, unutilized, we will hand over to state agencies for similar things to be built for the security intelligence agencies, the judiciary, nurses, teachers, and others, so that encroachment of government lands will stop and we know we have your backing, so we'll continue to go ahead and retrieve government lands. On this note, Mr. President, I thank you very much, and God bless you. The Honorable Henry Quarte, Great Accra Regional Minister MP, thank you ever so much for that warm note of welcome. As for the blue kiosk and the other loto kiosk, I'll speak with Sami Oku about that. This morning, Mr. President, we're joined by the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, MP for Takwa, the Honorable George Mreku Duka. Thank you very much for joining us. This morning, a proud family of Dom Kwabenya is here represented by her illustrious son, a former High Commissioner to India and the current CEO of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Dom Kwabenya, receive your very own Ambassador Michael Kwe Jr. We welcome you warmly. In moving on with the program, we would like to receive remarks from a collaborating ministry, the Ministry of Interior. Please make welcome the Minister, the Honorable Ambrose Derry, MP. Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, the Honorable Minister for National Security, Honorable Minister for Defense, Honorable Minister for Lands, Honorable Minister for Greater Accra Region, Honorable Ministers, Deputy Ministers, the Honorable MP for this constituency, other MPs present, I would like to address the indefatigable Inspector General of Police, Dr. Kufudampari, and his able team of POMAP members of the Ghana Police Service, officers of the Ghana Police Service, men and women of Ghana Police Service, other security heads here, I would like to say all protocol observed. Today, 
we are yet witnessing another landmark achievement by His Excellency the President. Excellency the President, in the 20, before the election in 2016, the manifesto, he did make a number of proposals for security. Number one, that we should work to make each and every person in Ghana feel safe. And as part of the package, it was to empower security agencies. First of all, make sure that personnel are recruited and well trained and that they are respecters of the rule of law, equality before the law. There is no special law for one group and the other. And Mr. President, today people can witness that at least as long as traffic offenses are concerned, the police are moving towards your goal that all classes of people are arrested when they do breach the law. Ministers, MPs, police officers, and all tribe. Mr. President, in 2018, you appeared before Parliament and you then made an allocation of an extra 800 million to start the transformation agenda of the police. We have come a long way. Mr. President, I can assure you on behalf of the police that you have seen changes, backlog of promotions dealt with, training now more professional, equipment recently we've escalated it to three helicopters for them but mr president you also said that you were going to undertake barracks regeneration and on 27 july 2018 i was privileged to on your behalf sign an mou with a unique development company and was to establish an ultra-modern barracks. And today, we are at to here to see the completion of the first phase. Mr. President, contrary to what some opponents might want to say, you have kept all your promises, and you have delivered, and today, we are seeing a piece of development that the police have never seen before. Mr. President, on behalf of the police and the Minister of Interior, I do also know that you will soon also be dealing with accommodation for immigration. But for today, I want to thank you. I want the whole Ghana to acknowledge that you say and do what you say. And that we in the police and the security services are impressed and grateful to you and we are going to work together to make sure that this country continues to be the oasis of peace thanks to your effective support mr president so on behalf of the police and the ministry please thank you for being that partner who always makes things happen thank you very much Once more, let's celebrate a tremendous leader of progress, the Minister for Interior, the Honorable Ambrose Derry MP. Please, a round of applause. Thank you for all the sweeping reforms you've brought to the ministry and to the Ghana Police Service. Speaking to us now is a man who has defined or redefined the way we use land in Ghana. I can think of no better steward of our lands than the one, the only, Minister for Lands and Natural Resources of the Republic of Ghana. Make welcome the Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, MP. Mr. President, Greater Accra Regional Minister, Minister for Interior, Minister for Defense, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State, Inspector General of Police, Members of Parliament, Member, member of Parliament for Domeko Abenya and other Members of Parliament, 
Executive Secretary and Management of Lands Commission, Nime, Name, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the President of the Republic for his extraordinary leadership and continuous support to the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources in the discharge of his mandate and for accepting our invitation to commission this newly constructed barracks for the Ghana Police Service. Mr. President, this project is ample testament to your selfless dedication towards effective and prudent management and utilization of the lands and natural resources of our country. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here this morning because of the vision of the President to give a facelift to our urban cities through his government's policy of urban redevelopment schemes. Historically, large tracts of lands have been allocated to state agencies for projects of which very small portions are actually utilized, leaving large portions of such lands unused. This, perhaps, was not a problem in 1957, when we were only 6 million people. Today, with a population of over 30 million, it is important that we put our lands to optimal and judicious use. This is why the Urban Redevelopment Scheme is being implemented by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources in partnership with the Lands Commission and the Land Use and Spatial Planning Authority, LUSPA, to utilize such lands in a manner that will contribute to the socio-economic development of our country. This scheme is being implemented in areas such as Kumasi Sector 18, which comprises of Ridge, Danyame, and in Shiasu residential areas, Old Tamale Airport, Red Sector 1, 2, and 3 residential areas in Cape Coast, as well as the Aviation City here in Accra. The Aviation City uh, area encompasses land adjacent airport city and stretches from Stambik Heights through the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, to the Ministry of Defense. Currently, the land hosts a number of installations for the Ghana Police Service including a barracks with primary and junior high schools, mobile force courtesies, rapid deployment force, national protecting unit, fuel depot and workshop. Other occupants in the area include the Band Trooping Army of the Ghana Armed Forces, the West African Examination Council, the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, Ghana Airport Company Limited, and the Ghana Meteorological Agency. The Aviation City Redevelopment requires that all these agencies are relocated to free up the land for redevelopment. This has led to the construction of these barracks for the Ghana Police Service through a private, public private partnership to relocate the personnel of the Ghana Police Service in the Aviation City Enclave to these barracks. Mr. President, I want to thank all the ministries, departments, and agencies that have collaborated with us to accomplish this feat, including the ministries of Interior, Defense, Transport, and communications and digitalization, as well as all the agencies within the Aviation City Enclave that have been relocated. It will be remiss on my part not to recognize the hard-working staff of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and the Lands Commission, as well as our private partner for the redevelopment of the Aviation City, Unique Development Company, whose tireless efforts have made today's event possible. It is our hope that this event will kickstart the smooth relocation of all these agencies for the redevelopment to commence. Sir, permit me to specially mention my deputy minister responsible for lands and forestry, who doubles as the chair of this project's implementation team, Honorable Benito Owusubio, MP, for his outstanding efforts in realizing for his outstanding efforts in realizing your vision through this project. He has, over the years, been truly outstanding in the delivery of this project. Mr. President, Honorable Ministers, Nime, Name, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, land continues to be the number one factor for development. Our socio-economic development is therefore intrinsically intertwined with how we administer, manage, and utilize our land resources. That is why, under the distinguished and able leadership of President Akufuado, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources continues to adopt and implement policies and programs to promote efficient and effective land administration, including digitization and digitalization of the records of the Lands Commission, improving land service delivery, promoting land tenure and protecting public lands. The new 
and groundbreaking land act 2020 act 1036 gives us a strong footing and the national land conference which president akufuado opened in december last year gave us a good direction and an implementation plan we will continue to work with all stakeholders to deliver a robust and functioning land administration that is anchored on transparency and integrity and improve our urban cities through the urban redevelopment scheme ours is to intelligently unleash our lands and natural resources in contributing significantly to the transformative program of president nana adodan kwakufuado in constructing here in our country a prosperous ghana beyond aid i thank you for your attention Ghana's Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, the Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, deserves a resounding round of applause for his leadership and his innovation. Talking about this land, and it will not be complete without acknowledging the owners of the land, we're joined this morning by His Majesty the Domi Manche, Ni Aya Peku the First. Please. In his company, the Domi Manye, Na De De Amobie the First. Allow me to acknowledge with gratitude the family head, Ni Adi James. In a show of solidarity, we're joined by the Abokobi chief, the Honorable Samuel Ni Ajete Mohenu. The boy chief also joins in solidarity, Ni Joseph Naku. And last but certainly not the least, the Poma Manye, Na Ache Kweli the third. Let's hear it up together for all of them. We're particularly grateful for the hands that have held the wheels of this great area. I'm talking about the former and current MCs. Make welcome the current MC, the Honorable Elizabeth Kaki. And the former MC for Ga East, the Honorable Janet Tulasi Mensa. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Wisdom, they say, is justified by her children. And if you see all of these officials of states, exhibiting excellence in their mandate is because there is excellence flowing from the top this afternoon it's with pride i give to you the gift of the uh, of this occasion a fount of wisdom the president of our republic make welcome nana adodankwa akofuado clergy Christian and Muslim, the Greater Accra Regional Minister and Member of Parliament for Ayawasu Central, the Minister for National Security, the Minister for the Interior and Member of Parliament for Nandom, the Minister for, the Def for Defense and Member of Parliament for Bimbila, Minister for Lands and Natural Resources and Member of Parliament for Damango the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources and Member of Parliament for Atrima Webiaja North, the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources and Member of Parliament for Takwa Iswayem, the Member of Parliament for Domi Kwabinya, the Municipal Chief Executive for Domi Kwabinya Municipal Assembly, Chief Executive Officer of the Free Zones Authority, the Inspector General of Police and Leadership of the Ghana Police Service, the Chairman, Executive Secretary and Management of the Lands Commission, the Chief Executive Officer of Unique Development Company Limited, Ni Ajete Mohenu, President, Ga East Chiefs Association, Alhaji Bashiru Inusa, the President of the Ga East Zungo Chiefs Council, Apostle Kwaku Menya, General Secretary Ga East Council of Churches, Imam Abdullah Yaya Sadiq, President of the Ga East Imams Council, Na Achele Kwele Akpama Manye, Ni Aya Peku the First. Domi Manche, Numo Blenfu the third, acting president of the Usu Traditional Council, 
Name, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. I must at the outset thank the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources under the leadership of its dynamic minister, Samuel A. Jinapo, Member of Parliament for Damango, and everyone involved in this project and in the Aviation City project. It is testament to government's resolve to modernizing our cities and providing decent accommodation and housing for our men and women in uniform. Ladies and gentlemen, building a progressive and prosperous Ghana requires that we continue to invest in the development of our infrastructure, the provision of essential services, and the improvement in the living conditions of our people, even in the midst of a global economic crisis. The importance of land to the realization of this modern prosperous Ghana is self-evident. It is estimated that Ghana's urban population will reach 72% by 2035. This represents a unique challenge as well as an opportunity to develop innovative solutions to the growing demand for housing, infrastructure, and public services in our major cities. To address this challenge, government has been working tirelessly to implement a comprehensive urban development strategy, which includes the construction of affordable housing units, the expansion of transportation networks, and the upgrading of public facilities, such as schools, hospitals, and police stations. We've made considerable strides in this respect. Since 2017, we've launched several initiatives aimed at addressing Ghana's housing deficit, which currently stands at some 2 million units. Despite these measures, rapid urbanization continues to put immense pressure on our land resources. This has led to the degradation of some of our prime lands, particularly in urban areas. It is therefore of utmost importance that we prioritize the optimal use of our land resources. That is why government, through the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and the Lands Commission, has embarked on an ambitious urban renewal program aimed at redeveloping prime areas in major cities across the country, including the Kumasi Sector 18, the Marine Drive Tourism Development Project, and the Takradi Beach Road Redevelopment Scheme, amongst others. This facility which I'm commissioning today is the outcome of one such urban renewal program, the Aviation City Redevelopment Project at the airport enclave. It is to pave way for this redevelopment that these state-of-the-art facilities have been constructed through a public-private partnership with unique development company for our hard-working men and women of the Ghana Police Service. The facility is made up of 514 one- and two-bedroom self-contained flats, of which 322 have been completed and ready for occupation. These units are fitted with modern facilities and will serve as comfortable homes and afford a conducive working environment for police officers and their families. In addition to the residential accommodations, this project also provides a school with modern facilities, a clinic, an astroturf football field, a tennis court, a standby generator, a police station, a fuel filling station, a workshop enclave, and other essential amenities. This is further testimony 
of our unwavering commitment to provide decent accommodation and other facilities for our security personnel. Not only will this facility improve the welfare of the police officers, it will also enhance their capacity to serve our nation even more effectively. As we commission the first phase of this project, I urge the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Lands Commission and Unique Development Company to work in earnest and complete the remaining 192 housing units and other facilities that make up the second phase of the project. I've been briefed that work is also far advanced on the construction of 15 bedroom self-contained flats for the Ghana Meteorological Agency, the Ghana Airport Company Limited, and the Greater Accra Regional Office of the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA. The completion of these projects is crucial to the implementation of the Aviation City Project. Once again, I want to commend all those who have worked for the success of this project. And let me mention specifically Unique Development Company Limited for partnering with government to put up these facilities for the police service and for the excellent quality of its work. This obviously is a great step towards the redevelopment of the Aviation City Enclave, which will give a positive facelift to our capital city. Let me assure you, ladies and gentlemen, of my full commitment to the realization of this project towards the Ghana we aspire. I'm confident that with God's guidance and your support, we will achieve our vision of a developed, progressive, and prosperous Ghana. Accordingly, I have the singular honor and pleasure to declare the Kwabinya Police Barracks duly commissioned. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the vision bearer, the president of our republic, our great inspiration, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Mr. President, we thank you ever so much for your vision that has translated into conviction and action by your stewards, the ministers for lands and natural resources and interior. Today we behold this great work or works of art which have been born out of a private public partnership. No single government funds have gone into this. Put your hands together and let's celebrate the ingenuity and innovation. I'd like to acknowledge with gratitude the presence of the Director General of the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, who is grateful for this great gathering. Make welcome Professor Samuel Boachi Dampare. So you just seen President Ekofuato there uh, commissioning a 312 housing units for the police in Kwabinya. And he says that government is working round the clock to fix the housing deficits of the country, which currently stands at 2 million units. The project actually was facilitated by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and it's supposed to help improve the welfare of police for them to execute their duties effectively. The president also announced some 15 uh, bedroom flats which is underway and at various uh, stages of completion for the uh, Matthew, Ghana Matthew Service and Ghana Airport Company and um, other government institutions and he says that uh, they believe in uh, that the progressive Ghana requires the development of infrastructure and improving of living conditions of people and which his country is doing. We can go back to the ve uh, venue of the event. The IGP, Dr. Dampare, is currently speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very simple task, and I will speak to it in five main terms. 
The first one. The building or something. On behalf of my colleagues in the police service, from His Excellency the President. I must say that we, are, we were more than ready to receive it to the level that we couldn't wait for Mr. President to end his speech. <laughs> the second one is to also thank Mr. President in particular and his government in general for delivering on his promise to give us this facility. And I want to say, Mr. President, again, Mr. President, for the last time, Mr. President, we thank you very much. Why do I have to mention Mr. President's name thrice? Because what we are seeing is the first of its kind in my own life history. And for that, we are eternally grateful to you, Mr. President, and your government. And I hope generations that will come after us will come and also extend their great gratitude to you even when we are long gone. The third, Mr. President, is to give you the assurance on behalf of my colleagues and hold myself personally responsible as long as I remain Inspector General of Police that this facility, its maintenance, we will never make it your headache. Indeed, during the opportunity you give to me to be the Inspector General of Police, my colleagues and I vowed that will make our institution the best in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond. And maintaining our facilities and bringing them to standard is one of the ingredients towards that. And a sign of it, as I've been alluded to, is the signs we are seeing at our headquarters. And we'll bring that same thinking and commitment of maintenance to this facility and all other police. The fourth, Mr. President, is also to assure you that as Oliver Twist, we will always ask for more because there are so many other places that deserve a facility like this so as to help myself and my colleagues to be able to continue on to prosecute the agenda of ensuring that there is peace, security, law, and order in this country. And we therefore want to plead with you to look beyond this and look at the case of Accra Central, the case of Kumasi Central, the case of Tamale, the case of Tema, and put all this together so that as you have pampered us over the years, we'll continue to be pampered by guided and principle and be motivated to also do more in terms of ensuring that there is peace and security in this country. Mr. President, the last one I'm alluding to before I sit down is also to give you the assurance that my colleagues and I, working in partnership with other security agencies, want to give you the biggest of assurance to you, to the government, and to the people of this country that we will never sleep, we will never rest until this country is at peace with itself. I thank you very much, Mr. President. Officers, officers, law enforcement, law enforcement, law enforcement, enforce. And such is their morale, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it up for the Gallans, Ghana Police Service. Around GP receiving uh, those units, thanking government for that initiative, and he pledged the police's continuous commitment to ensuring there's law and order. He says the police will never rest until there is peace in the country. We can out. Mm -hmm.